Tell us about what you feel like is a fad diet in the vegan community, because I know you feel very strongly about this. I wanted to bring up this idea of how meat-based diets have traditionally looked not dangerous, because people could show studies saying, look, here's people who cut out red meat and they still aren't living longer. And they can show numerous studies that looked at if meat was a risk factor for cancer or heart attack, and it's not, because when you cut down red meat, people aren't living longer. And the reason why these people can use these studies is because people switch from red meat to chicken. And when you switch from one type of animal product to another, you don't get significant benefits. Even though you That's, always hear that red meat has like high saturated fat, really bad for you, chicken really isn't better? No, it's not. You're sweet. saying that's a true study? Yes, it's animal protein has, a, and, and you cook it, and the way it's cooked, and there's so many Back different here. dangerous factors in eating chicken too. So the reason why the most of the studies, or they switched meat to refined carbohydrates. So, okay, now we're talking processed about carbs. processed carbs. Processed yeah. carbs or something. Right, not okay. healthy options. But now we have, since 2018, we have numerous studies that compare people who cut back on animal protein food and instead replacing it with chicken and processed foods, instead they replaced it with whole plant foods that were high in protein. The plant foods that are high in protein are whole grains, vegetables, beans, and nuts and seeds. So now we have four foods, plant foods that are high in protein, which make up the most foods what you eat on your vegetarian diet. Mm -hmm. Whole grains, vegetables, beans, nuts and seeds. For sure. You know, so that's most of what you're eating. So these are relatively high protein plant foods. And these studies done by different researchers around the world, every year show with hundreds of thousands of people in the study, showing that as you modulate animal protein down and increase plant protein or substitute plant protein, people live longer and have mm -hmm. lower risk of all chronic diseases, especially heart attacks, strokes, and cancers. So I can show a couple of, just so people see these five references here. Here's a reference starting in 2016, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, a series of five references that show that this, the title of these studies are, one is association of animal and plant protein intake with all cause and is cause specific mortality. The next one is associated with plant and animal protein and overall and cause specific mortality. And the other ones associated with major dietary protein sources with all cause and cause specific mortality. So it's all different, and they're all different researchers, not the same researchers, mm -hmm. all done different. So they have many people investigating this information, and these are large scale studies with many, many people looking at hard endpoints. That means the hard endpoint, a soft endpoint is you lost weight and your rest weight, your triglyceride looks better, your glucose looks better. A hard endpoint is you had a heart attack, a cancer diagnosis, or you died. It's a more, it's a later life event that's more significant. Right. And we show that the most important thing you could do to live longer and reduce your risk of having a dangerous endpoint is eating more foods that are rich in plant proteins and cutting down on animal protein. So that's unbelievably, so that's one. And then we have um, this study that, in regard to total mortality risk of death, more studies showing where we're not comparing it to red meat to chicken, but red meat to some other plant, to plant food, it's about, you, we see dramatic increase, such as, here's like a 30, Six per thirty-six percent increase in total mortality, and this is just red meat and processed meat, of course. And then, so we have numerous studies showing dramatic differences. This is how you roadie to live with all these studies around. You're saying it's not the chicken. Well, when I wrote my books, yeah. I had a big file cabinet in those days. Uh, yeah, of hundreds of studies that I had filed, and I'm going th and writing the book took a long time. Did you know immediately what your diet would be? Like, did you know this when you were? Or was it like kind of like putting together a puzzle from all these studies? Well, I kind of had an idea because I was spent my life for decades reviewing and reading these studies. So I had filed, and I always filing them and organizing you them. You printed them out? Yeah, I printed them out because we didn't have computers in those days that were like as easy as to store them on, on Word process. So I'd have to have like files and files in my offices that when we're talking about 40 years ago, I had mm -hmm. files and files and files and files of studies organized, breast cancer, colon cancer, really? you know, heart disease, studies, this study, that study. I had books to the kazoo, and but yeah. nowadays it's more simple because we have everything online and we can find it better. And we can oh, the, um, Were paper. there studies back then that corroborated all this evidence? Yes. Yeah, so that's when my first book was written in 1996. Right. So there's a lot of study references in fasting and eating for health and food, Eat to Live, which was published in 2004, was written around 2000 to 2003. Right. You know, so yeah, there were a lot of studies. I have, you know. But, Even though it's such a new field, it existed. All of that information was available. Yes. There's a tremendous accumulation of studies done over the last over the last 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. That's been really- but you know, no real changes in your diet? Or what would you say was like the biggest change that you made after new studies came out? Or was it really corroborating all what you've thought? 
the biggest change I made was recognizing the beneficial effects of onions and mushrooms mm -hmm. and that the need to eat and cruciferous vegetables and onions to actually eat them raw in the raw form when you to maintain those nutrients in them. So some like fun additions, like ways to even like supercharge your health, I will say. Yeah. yeah. But mostly what the changes in the, what I've learned is in the field of addiction and enabling people to do this more readily. When I first started out doing this 20, 30 years ago, I'd have a much higher failure rate when, pe when I'm telling people what to do. Now I have much more knowledge in how to help people do this successfully and comply with the recommendations, enjoy right. it more, change their personalities, their psychology, make it so they can really understand this and really, um, I have a more impact in enabling people to do it. Yeah.